Hi, I'm Ryan, and welcome to our tour, a virtual tour of our solar powered wide beam houseboat. The most noticeable difference in our boat is obviously the roof full of solar panels. Um, on the roof, we have 21 panels making up some 6 kilowatts of energy. These solar panels produce energy whether it's full sun or cloudy overcast winter conditions. Obviously, they're less efficient in winter when the sun angle is low, that's why we have so many of them. We've also recently added another rear panel. This is for some testing to do some uh, heating for winter, but not, not wired up at the moment, just providing some shade. We have some built-in steps into the cabin. These are easy access to the roof and our small deck area up top. This is our, this is our rear seating area. We've got a, what's generally called a Euro Cruiser, um, which is a kind of big wraparound seating area. Below, below me is our electric motors and then the rear seating area is also the large battery bank which we'll come back to at the end of the tour and we'll show you how the boat's propelled. Our entrance is a keypad entry system, just kind of press in the code and she opens up. We, we went for large glazed doors just because we wanted as much light as, to get into the boat as possible. Just kind of come downstairs pretty much like any other boat. Sunflower is slightly wider than a standard wide beam at 13 foot. Um, the reason we did this is because we live on it more than we cruise and the parts of the Thames that we're in, what we're in um, is very large and doesn't, the locks are huge and we don't really worry about our, our width. The kitchen is a pretty standard Howdens kitchen. The one exception is we've gone with really efficient appliances as much as we could. Um, I mean it's a normal domestic fridge but it's a double A rated. Um, we kind of had to weigh up cost versus efficiency, but they're all A or A plus and above. We have an electric oven, so we have no gas on board, which is super convenient. And again, it's all powered by the solar panels. There's a washing machine like you'd have in a normal kitchen. We've even gone and got a dishwasher, which is quite, quite nifty for a boat. But uh, yeah, we find it really, really useful. We have a standard sink. We have granite worktops, which we love because they're kind of really hard to sustain. Um, our island in the, in, the, in the middle is slightly unusual as well, it's movable, it sits on wheels, which yeah, they do lock when we're cruising, so that they don't, don't go, go around, but it means we can change the space and we can create um, a large open plan if we, if we prefer. We went with large, large triple glazed windows just because we wanted as much light and brightness as we could in the boat, and I think that helps to make the boat feel as big as it does. They are larger than normal and they're triple glazed so they don't let out any heat. Um, we also went with triple insulation so most build, boat builders kind of just spray on 25 mil spray foam. I, I know from previous experience that that's just not very good. So we went with triple insulation and we'd recommend that on any build. Our heating system. Okay. We went with an eco log burner so yes it's a traditional log burner that we try to burn eco logs on so super dry recycled hardwood which because it's incredibly dry burns really cleanly and hot we also store our heat so the the log burner has a back boiler on it which also heats our underfloor heating system as well as our uh, hot water cylinder we have a large cylinder which we'll show you in a minute this particular boat has a concrete floor which means it has a thermal mass so this 18 tons of concrete which gets heated by our eco log burner stores heat so we only have to run the flyer for a couple of hours of an evening to heat our hot water for the day and to heat our slab and it stays hot for a long time and we also wanted access to below our slab at some points in case we ever need to inspect so we've got some nifty little things like we built a little wine cellar which has access to below the slab just to just allow ease of access if we ever need to inspect our sofa area, our sofa is a, is a modular, modular seating area and you might have seen some of our other videos where this all becomes a dining room space where we have a pop-up table. It's also a double bed if you have more than four guests, which is quite neat we think. Coming to, this is our second bedroom I'm going to show you. Um, if you're going to have a look inside there, it's a full-size double bed. There's storage underneath. Hidden behind here, we also have a cupboard for whoever's using this bedroom. And then this whole bit, this whole cupboard slides forward. And that shows us all our, all our control systems for the boat. So in there we have our heat recovery ventilation system, which I'll tell you about. We have our water filtration system for our ra harvested rainwater, which I'll tell you about, as well as our underfloor heating controls. 
and the hot water cylinder all inside there. So the heat recovery system, which is different from standard boats, standard boats have mushroom vents, which means all the heated warm air in the boat leaves the boat and sucks cold fresh air from different points. Our heat recovery system, what it does is it takes warm stale air from high points in the, in the boat, takes it through a heat exchanger, which warms the cold fresh air coming into the boat. So we still change all our air in the boat every hour, but we recover 75% of that heat. Another reason why we use less fuel and burn less carbon. The water filtration system is to, is to look after our rainwater. So all the rainwater that lands on the roof, we harvest. So we collect it in a tank and then before we use it, it goes through a three-stage three filtration system just to clean it up. We also use it, we have a drinking water tank and we also use a carbon filter to take all the chlorine out of normal, normal water drink, drinking water. Cool. Next part of the tour is our bathroom. We have a bath, we have a walk-in shower, we have a toilet and a basin. Um, we ended up not using the bath as much as we thought we would, but uh, it's a nice thing to have. Okay, my favorite part of the tour is our composting toilet. Um, people are struggling to get their heads around this. Um, and yes, it takes some tweaking and getting, getting used to it, but what actually happens is it takes Haley and I, the two of us, a month to fill a bucket. When that bucket is full, we put a lid on it and we store it for six months. At the end of that six months, it is completely neutral. It is compost. You can throw it on your veg patch, or you can do whatever you like with it. I'll show you how it works. How this system works is called a separated toilet because it separates the urine and the solids. So you lift up the toilet like you would any normal toilet. Um, and there's a separate area for your urine. So gents and ladies both have to sit down just to stop splashing really. And then once you sit down, it opens the rear flap and that, means, and that means your solids can go in the back and get stored. There's also an extractor fan on it that's continuously sucking air out the boat so you have no smells coming back, as well as helping to start to dehydrate the solids that are going in the back. The urine um, is actually going into a tank um, which we can empty out so we can take that once a week we can take that tank and pour it on the river bank it's it's fertilizer it's, it's pure it's pure nitrates or if you wanted we can have a system where we can just pump it out into the river depending on what on, on what part of the river and the regulations are cool we love our composting toilet we know it's not for everyone but if honestly if we went back to a house Haley and i would both have a composting toilet the water saving is phenomenal. About a third of your normal domestic house water goes straight down the toilet. We don't have that. Cool. I'll go through. So this is our main, uh, this is our main bedroom. Um, again, it's a full king size bed, probably a bit bigger than normal. It's a lot higher than normal, you probably noticed. The reason for this is we've got a water tank underneath and that's our harvested rainwater. So um, all the water that collects off, off the roof ends up in here. We, like, we also like it to be high because we get a view out. Most boats have low, have low beds and low furniture. You end up looking up at windows and not actually seeing the river. We go out the front. Um, again, we have another water tank, which is, which is what we use for drinking water. So we fill that with Thames water with a hose pipe. And we just use that for drinking. So our kitchen sink and our basin sink is, is from there. There's a nice little seating area out there and we use the space quite a lot. Um, yeah, and it just, um, yeah, just a really nice space to use. Um, I'm going to take you back now and show you all the working parts of the engine and the batteries, which is quite cool. So this is what I think is the coolest part of the boat. So as I was saying earlier, the solar power means we have electric motors that power the boat rather than a diesel engine. It's a lot neater than a diesel engine. They're smaller, they fit in the space nicely. There they are there. We have two motors, so we have two 13 kilowatt units, one there and one there. And these are able to, these are able to power our very heavy boat, which weighs 42 tons um, at a speed of three knots. The boat could be lighter, the boat could be faster, but this suits our needs perfectly. These two units here are solar controller inverters. So what they do is they take the solar energy from, from the solar array and, and put it into the batteries. They do this in such a way that they're constantly monitoring the batteries, never overcharging them, and always making sure that they're being charged at their best possible rate, which means the batteries last exponentially longer than if you plugged into shore power and had a boost charge. 
So if we come in here and we lift this rear seating panel, there they are. So that's half our battery bank, which is made up of 24 2 volt cells, which are a thousand amp hours each. So that 1.2 tons of battery is more than there's more than enough to power this boat. The reason why we have such a large battery when everyone else has small deep cycle batteries is because these cells are rated to life cycles. But if you have a large battery and you only use the top small portion of the of their charge like what, what's our most common use with the solar array constantly charging them up they're rated to do 5,000 cycles so between 10 and 20 years if you use 80 percent of their charge so down to 20 percent which is on a rare occasion where you might be cruising in winter or cruising at night then they're rated to do 500 cycles unfortunately this is what most people have done in the past is work out the exact cruising time and buy a battery for that exact amount of part the downside the downside of that is you completely cycling your batteries and that's why they don't last as long so unfortunately a big a big expense of, of creating a system like this is the battery bank and it needs to be done well otherwise in two years time people will be saying oh i need new batteries this doesn't work so that's what we've done so this is how we've configured our battery bank um, on the sunflower but going forward on your models we've actually placed the battery bank in the engine bay so in the large space that you can see where generally a, a motor would be we place our, our huge 2.4 tons of batteries there we've also simplified the motor structure so instead of having two twin motors turning two propellers to try and stick with and help the traditional boat builders we've got two twin motors pulling together off one prop shaft this simplifies the controls and simplifies the ease for any boat builder to fit a system like this to your boat thank you so much for coming and having a look i hope you enjoyed